Hey folks, my name is Richard Dimitri. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the founder of Sanchito International. I'm a violence prevention and defense tactics instructor. I teach self-defense, personal protection, hand-to-hand -hand combat. I've been doing that my entire life, pretty much. Uh, I travel the world doing this stuff. I've worked with the British Special Forces. I've worked with the Finland Presidential Security Team, their counter-terrorist units, international women's movements, people from all walks of life. I myself have worked as a bouncer, undercover security guard, I've worked as a doorman, I've, done, I've had a lot of experience with violence. Now, all that aside, I have a little, I need to explain something. There's a big difference between self-defense, fighting, and martial arts. I bang my head on the wall trying to explain this, but it makes our, our job very, very difficult. When we enter a school who hire us for self-defense, they expect us to hit pads for the entire time. Self-defense is not fighting combatives and hand-to-hand -hand combat, and it's not martial arts. It's like comparing tennis, badminton, and ping pong. They're three different games. So are these animals. They're three different animals. Self-defense isn't about hurting another human being. Self-defense isn't about winning. It's not about losing. It's not about who's right or wrong. It's not about who started it. It's not about justice or revenge or about uh, punishment or vengeance. It's not about any of that. Self-defense is about survival, it's about going home at night, or it's about stopping the other person from hurting you. It's not about hurting them, but stopping them from hurting you. Morally, legally, and ethically. Why? Because the law becomes involved and the aspect of a revenge becomes involved and a whole bunch of factors becomes involved. Self-defense is behavioral, it's psychological, it's emotional, it involves many variables like situation variable, uh, environmental, human, error, all of these are variables that come into play that don't come into play in the martial arts. While you're sparring in MMA, no one's going to stick a knife in your back, shoot you in the back of the head, smash a beer bottle, snatch you, right? It, it's, it doesn't happen that way. The environment changes. Self-defense is a legal term. It's not a system of fighting. It's human. It's not stylistic. It's not, nobody owns it. It's, it started when the first caveman grabbed a stick and tried to hit the other guy and he did this and hit him back. It was self-defense. And today it's a legal term that states a civilian has the moral, legal, and ethical right to protect themselves, defend themselves in the face of a threat. To stop that threat any way they can. And to protect somebody innocent if that may be. So you have to be understand many, many different aspects. And who gets targeted in societies for self-defense? The vulnerable, the weak. Right? I, you can't teach an 11 year old girl combatives for self defense. A 6 foot 4, 275 pound pedophile approaches a little girl and wants to abduct her and subdue her. There's no amount of striking or blunt force trauma in the world that's going to help her there. A 2 year old, 3 year old child becomes victimized by his grandfather or his uncle, a family pedophile, from that age on, and he starts to intuitively feel it's wrong, but the pedophile gives him blood. It's not, he's not beating up the child. In his brain, he's loving the kid. Now, of course, the kid intuitively knows this is wrong, but the grandfather, the, the uncle, whoever the pedophile tells him, no, no, it's okay, it's natural. Now, the kid believes him, and this is a family member, right? Is this kid going to, you know, hammer an elbow or a fucking head by ah, ah, ah. He's not. He's 11 or 8 or 6. So this kid needs a voice. These victims of pedophilia, that's where self-defense, but they need a voice. They need somebody to teach them and make them understand that they have help, they have a way out, that they can speak, that, they're abu that their abuser's greatest threat, their greatest power over them is their silence. Not their front kick to their nuts or their finger jab or a shredder or a monkey or a helmet or whatever fucking gimmick you're teaching or I'm teaching, whoever is doing. It's not about that. That's, that's combatives, that's martial arts, that's when you have time with somebody to train them for hours and months and years at a time. But these people here, these people, the elderly, the mentally disabled, the physically handicapped, the, the uh, uh, children and women, these are the people who get victimized in society. The, the, you, you, these people can't be taught martial arts and combatives and expect them to use it in a violent situation. There's no art in violence. You bring the wrong tools to the wrong arena, you're not making it out alive. I have friends who didn't make it out alive. They, brought the, they were proficient fighters. They brought martial arts tools to the arena of violence. There's no culture, no discipline, no tradition, no athleticism, no respect 
in violence. It strikes at any time. It comes in many different formats. In 99%, okay, that's a little high there, but a vast majority of the people who victimize women, sexual abusers and assaulters and rapists, the woman knows who it is. The number one cause of murder for females on planet Earth is a male relationship. How do you, how do you attach it into a woman's brain who has been victimized for three years in a domestic abuse situation to finger jab her husband in the eyes? She needs more than that. She needs to understand and learn self-defense. Not combatives, not martial arts. Combatives is great for cops and bouncers and military personnel. Great, I, I'm complete, I respect that. There's a place for it. But don't sell what you're not. I don't sell my self-defense system. I don't teach self-defense as combatives and vice versa. Why? Because I respect my client. I'm not going to fucking lie to them. Do you understand? We're playing with people's lives. And, and, and people are hiring us expecting different things because the media, our industry, and people, A, can't tell the difference, and B, perpetrate the wrong thing. And that makes our job very difficult. And these kids... These women, the elderly, the people who need self-defense, well, guess what? They're the ones who suffer. So we have to make this right, and we need to educate the fucking public as to what the differences between self-defense, fighting, and martial arts are. Self-defense, you don't want any part of it. You want to walk away from that. You want to go home. My objective is to go back to my life the way it was before this situation found me. That's self-defense. Fighting, combatives, I want to hurt the person. Hit first, hit fast, go after him. He asks you the time, shove a pen in his throat, knee him in the ball, smashes it on a fucking brick wall, stomp him when he's down. Great, yeah, commit murder, do whatever you... I don't care, it's, that's not self-defense. My six-year-old boy can't do that. An 11-year-old girl can't do that. Uh, my mom, you can't, she's not, I don't care how long she's, she's not going to be able to do that. She's 77. She's not going to be able to stomp and nail and hit. She can barely walk to the bathroom. But you know what? She can feign fear, lure an attacker in, who might grab her by the hair while she's going, no, please, and shove her fingers in his eyes. And when he goes, fuck, ow, she can run away. She has an option. There's ways that these things can be done and taught if the psychology of violence, understanding human behavior in relation to violence is understood. And 90% of self-defense is not physical. It's not about kicking balls and punching faces. It's about understanding prevention and giving victims who are presently going through the hell a voice and a way out. Giving the survivors of this shit the courage and the understanding that they're capable to prevent it from happening, ever happening again. And stopping the ones who have ever happened to from ever happening to them. Prevention. And it's not about kicking pads or how hard you can hit. Because if somebody's in a wheelchair, if somebody is blind, they still have the right to learn self-defense. Why? Because it's not stylistic. It's not a systematic. It's not cultural. It's primarily human. Self-defense is human. Okay? Spread this fucking message. Share it. Make it viral. Make my job easier. Thank you.